Hey, what's going on? It's Caleb Ezekiel. I want to continue with the video from yesterday. I started doing another video, but I kind of want to just jump into it. How did I get into all this uh, spirituality? How did I get into, uh, why, do I, why, why do I believe God exists now? Um, let me kind of go back to how it all started. Um, I didn't believe in God probably throughout high school and the start of college. Um, somehow, I was very attracted to like the dark side of, of spirituality. Um, it, it was weird. Like I, li I used to listen like to all that old school Three Six Mafia, and you know how they had some crazy music and demon music, and I and I liked that stuff for some reason. So I was really addicted to like that dark side. I wanted like to be bad. I wanted to have like that dark side. So I remember one time even um, at Montgomery when I was going to school, Montgomery College. Um, one day I was just writing. I was writing lyrics. I, I, my rap name used to literally be Stephen the Heathen. Now I could not rap at all. I mean, I I was nervous to rap. I just couldn't do it. Um, I tried, and I just the nerves would would overtake me. It was terrible. I, I could write though. I liked writing. I've always liked writing. So, anyways, one day I'm writing. I'm in the I'm in the parking lot. And I used to go to school every single day, high and drunk. I used to in the trunk. I had a thirty pack of beers and I would go driving, you know, smoking on the way to school. So one day I'm going, uh, I'm at school and um, I'm in the parking lot just writing, writing. I put a beat on and I'm just writing. And it got to the point where I just kept writing and I didn't even know basically like when I stopped thinking and writing and it just kept going. It just kept going, kept going, kept going. And I could feel around me, it literally like the, the clouds were like turning dark. Everything around my car, around the whole atmosphere there was like, I just felt it dark. I'm not lying. And I'm writing, 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 and I can't stop writing. I just keep writing, keep writing. And that was probably one of the first like, I guess spiritual experience you could say I, I had. Now you could look at that and say, eh, whatever, you know, maybe, maybe not. Or you could say, no, it's not. But as I continued to have spiritual experiences, I can tell that it was. So I'm into like all this demon stuff. I'm into invoking demons. I'm into, uh, you know, I hadn't got, I hadn't got into invoking demons so much yet, but this is where like, I'm starting to taste it. And I'm starting to see what's going on and I'm starting to like this dark side of things. But before I got really deep into any spirituality, I had an experience. And this is how I know this is one of the first times I felt God knocking on the door and I didn't, I didn't see it then, or I didn't want to receive it. I couldn't receive it at that moment. Um, I was working as a janitor in PG County. And one day I get in my car ready to go to work and I have this extreme feeling that I have forgot something, that I have left something inside. So. I'm looking through, I'm doing my checklist. I'm like, I have my phone, my wallet, my keys, obviously. And I don't know what it is that I have forgot. But the feeling was so deep that I couldn't pull away. I just could not pull away because I knew, I knew that I knew that I had forgot something. So I go back inside my house looking for something that I have no idea what I'm even looking for. So I'm looking around the room and I'm just like, like what the heck am I looking for, right? And I see on the corner of my uh, drawer a Bible that my dad had given me in 1999. I'll be honest, I have no idea how that Bible got into my room because I was not interested in, in the Bible at that time. Could I have taken it out of the attic or something months or weeks before that? Yes, but I do not remember that. I just remember seeing that Bible and this hunch came over me like that's what it was. So I'm like, yeah, right, right? So I walk over to the Bible and I pick up the Bible. And as soon as I pick up the Bible, this peace came over me, like if I had found my wallet or my phone or, you know, I had found that thing that I had, you know, was missing. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, right, like, could this be it? So I take the Bible with me to work anyways. You know, I'm thinking about it on the way to work or whatever. When I get to work that day, I open up the Bible so I'm, because I'm like, all right, maybe it was the Bible. I don't know. So I open up the Bible. And I go to the Old Testament, like, I believe it was around, like, probably Joshua, where God is talking about, you know, destroy all the nations, dispossess them, do all this stuff. And I'm reading this, and I'm like, what? And I close the Bible, and I'm like, there is no way I'm going to believe in this God. And at that moment, I had decided that I was going to prove that the God of the Bible didn't exist. I literally said, I'm going to prove that the God of this Bible doesn't exist. So from that point on is when I started 
basically seeking spiritual spirituality. From there, I started getting into meditation. I started getting into yoga, uh, kundalini yoga, all types of stuff, uh, opening the chakras. I started seeking spiritual uh, guides. Um, I was into Silva Method. I even went to like a Silva Method seminar where we learned about, you know, where basically it was like the beginner stages to, to seek your, um, like your spirit guide, distance healing, all this, all this stuff, transcendental meditation. Um, I was getting, I was going to Hindu temples. I was going to Buddhist temples. I was reading a little bit from the Quran. I was, um, and I saw that the Quran and the Bible were kind of similar. So I didn't really like that anyways. I was reading from the book. What is it? Bhagavad Gita, which is the Hindu scriptures and about Krishna and all this stuff. And um, I basically got to a point where I said, like, maybe all spirituality is connected somehow. Right. So I remember another spiritual experience I had was one day. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I want to talk about this yet. I might not. I think I'll, I won't talk about that right now. But basically... Should I? Okay. I don't know. It's hard because if I start talking about something and I don't give a full explanation, people that believe in, in different religions and believe that everything's connected, if I leave the testimony halfway, they're going to think that, that somehow I'm confused and that, and that really at the end of the day all the religions connect and they don't. So that's where my that's where my struggle is right now. I don't want to leave somebody kind of open ended. All right, so I took a little break there just to make sure that I had my thoughts together because there was something there was a couple of things that I didn't really want to go into yet. Maybe at a later later date I'll make like a full like a full testimony video or something. But I did want to kind of explain where kind of my faith started and how I see God kind of opening my eyes to different things earlier before he um, really impacted my life, which was what I talked about last time, how I heard his literal voice. Um, last time I started a song and I didn't really finish it because, to be honest, I didn't have the whole thing memorized. So here I want to continue with this song, and this song is talks a lot about my life. The things that I write in here, they're real. They're, I went through them. Um, talk about a lot of different things here about all the spirituality things that I went through I talk about chanting in a temple I talk about um, God speaking me, to me in an audible voice and um, what I do want to say is that at the end of the day after all the stuff that I went through after all the searching after all the doubt after all the blasphemy after cursing at God after uh, making fun of people that believed in God all this stuff that God still revealed himself to me. He still showed me that he loves me despite it. And he still shows that he's interested in people like me. So I know that if God brought me out of that kind of stuff, it's for a testimony. Now, when I was confused and I didn't believe in this stuff, I probably would have listened to me and been like, okay, cool, just another way to spirituality. But you have to understand that Every single religion makes a claim at truth. And you have to understand that the claims of Yeshua, of Jesus, are like none other. Like he literally says that he is the only way, that he is the truth, the way, the life, that no one comes to the Father if it's not through him. I mean, he makes some claims that, that if he's talking, the, if he's speaking the truth, then we have to really take into consideration what he's saying. You have to wrestle with those things. You have to decide what you're going to believe, what you're going to put your faith in. That's something that only is between you and God. And you think that it's only between you, but it's not. Like I said in the last video, truth does not depend on whether you believe it or not. Truth is truth. And if what he says in his, in his word is true, then there's a big responsibility on us to take that and do something with it. And I decided to do something with it. I decided to say, um, yeah, I'm going to put my trust in you. You have obviously shown me that you exist. You have spoken to me in a, in a supernatural way. You've spoken to me in other ways. You've revealed yourself in, in powerful ways. Um, and I'm going to take 
some time away from what I think I know. I'm gonna take a break from, from the things that I'm used to and I had to separate myself and seek God. Um, his word, reading his word is, gonna, is going to change the way you see things, the way you see the world. Um, and it's not something to be afraid of. It's, it's just his word. Read it. Try to pray and try to ask God to open up your mind, open up your heart. And basically pray like, like I was praying, which is basically if you exist, I, I, I need to know that you exist. I want to know that you exist. And if, if everything is true, then he's the creator of the heavens and the earth the eternal God who wants a relationship with you. That's pretty awesome. Um, if you're wrong, it's a big problem. If you're right, you've gained everything. So let me continue with this song. I feel grieved when I see somebody leave. Seasons change and they fall like the leaves. No more holding on, they've let go of all belief. When I see them, I see me. Cause I wouldn't take the back seat, wouldn't let God drive. I was on my own feet. I'm a free man now. What you gon' say to me? Nothing at all. Cause I've been through it all. I got pain within, you can't see the scars. No. I was bitter with some roots like timber, heart cold like winter, mind divided like a splinter. So if I can prove that God doesn't exist, I don't have to fight my urge, I don't have to resist. I had something foreign in me like a cyst, I need it out. But the thoughts just persist, they don't go away. So I might as well go astray. In the world I went by heathen, that was my name. People called me that, I'm not playing. I thought the Bible was a joke, prophets blowing smoke, yet I was snorting coke, trying to cope, puffing bud till I choke. Sipping on the liquor, the plot is getting thicker. So called freedom only meant that I was getting sicker. Now here's the kicker, he came in like a flicker. He spoke like thunder, his voice is off the Richter. Not here to bicker, but you've got a broken transistor. I'm just trying to assist you, my brother or sister. Listen, I remember God trying to show me his word was true. Opened it up and was like, nah, dude, so much death. You want me to believe this mess? Before believing this, I choose death. Thought his story was a spoof, and if he was real, he must be a brute. That was my excuse to avoid seeking truth. Flesh exposed had me following suit. Passions burn, got you covered in suit. You're in the furnace like a chimney shoot. Started asking questions like, what's the point of life? And what'll happen if I die tonight? Is that too cliche? That's all that matters today. Once I realized there was more to life, I started to pray. But before we get there, I invoke demons, don't get scared. Beating on my chest like get in here. In front of a cemetery with no fear. I was addicted to the thrill, lend an ear. He who has one, let him hear. Atheism, the silver method, transcendental meditation. I've been there, throwing curse words in the air. If he exists, why doesn't he? He appeared. God is patient. He's so fair. Read from the Quran and thought, what is going on has a similar tune, but it's not the same song. I'll admit I was going insane, playing with flames. False teachings were propane, igniting blasphemy in my brain. Also chanted in the temple. The same phrase, so simple. Nietzsche and Buddhism disciple. But what I heard one day made me go psycho. Speaking in Japanese, but what we said should have made me hit my knees. They were saying one of these, there is no God. There is no God. I had to stop. God have mercy. If you exist, show me. After a couple months, invited to church, I resisted much. Thought Christians were out to lunch. One night a preacher prayed, send angels in Jesus' name. Went home and said the same. Called on his mighty name. Lord, come in this place. It's a disgrace. So much wickedness. Rid me of this. The next day I woke up backwards in my bed. In his own voice, this is what he said. Before I send you angels, I send you humans. When I say he spoke, I mean it. I asked for angels. He said, you haven't seen them. I've sent you people and you still not believe in. But in my mercy, I give you what you are seeking. God doesn't have to show up in a powerful way. But I think about Thomas. I think about when, when, when Jesus had appeared to the disciples and Thomas says, no, unless I touch him, unless I see him, I will not believe. And Jesus appears to him. And he says, blessed are those that believe without seeing. Sometimes we think that somebody with blind faith is like, oh, wow, that's terrible. No, it's not. Um, either way, though, if you seek, God will show up. He doesn't have to. He's God. And that, does, that doesn't sit well with some people, but it's the truth. He doesn't have to, and in his mercy, he does. In his mercy, he showed up to me. I remember one day... I used to put God to the test. 
I was battling with a headache, and I told, this is the day I got baptized, a couple years ago, and I told God, if you don't heal me after I get baptized, I will leave. And I, <laughs> that's ignorant, right? So anyways, I get baptized that day, and as soon as I come up out of the water, uh, I was not healed, so I said, all right, I'm leaving. That night I left. I remember I dropped a brother off at his home after leaving the, you know, the, the whatever, wherever we got baptized. And I told him, you better pray for me because I'm pretty much like done, right? That night I went and got drunk. I mean, drunk. I slept around and it was just, it was just a mess. I had to come to a point where I gave up my supposed rights, where I gave up my will, where I gave up my fight. And I had to say, you know what, God, you have shown me so much. You've been so patient with me with somebody that's been so rebellious and outright just nasty. And I had to stop. And I had to die to myself. And I had to tell God, I'm going to walk by faith. And I'm not going to react that way. And to this day, I have to fight my urge to say, God, show up now the way I want it. When I was doing spiritual things before, I could manipulate my way into getting something. I could conjure spirits. I could uh, meditate until I felt tingly all over. I could, you know, try to invoke uh, visions through, through different techniques. And I was having visions and I was having communication with spirits that would s literally speak. Um, but it wasn't like that with God. It's so different with God. It's literally a instead of you trying to manipulate your way into it, you have to literally like give up. And when you give up, that's when God shows up. I pray that this testimony helps you. And I pray that it really just leads you to turn to God and to not trust in your own strength, to not trust in your own mind and your own heart because your own mind and heart are very deceiving. We can believe one thing one day and then believe something the next day, and our minds are always changing. Uh, the one thing that doesn't change is God. His truth doesn't change. And whether the world agrees with it or not, whether new things, new ways, new thinking agrees with it or not, he has stood the test of time. He's been there. He will always be there, and he's always there for us. God bless you guys.